Good evening. Welcome to St. Mary Catholic Church in National City. We're happy to have you attending this 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time as, as parishioners and visitors alike to ensure a very solemn celebration. Please turn off your cell phones or put them in silent mode. Thank you. Parish announcements. Thank the Lord, the presence of preaching of Father Jerry Orbus earlier today in St. Mary gathered more than 700 people, our own parishioners and those from other places. The Ortman Center was filled to capacity with the extra number, with the extra number under tents at the parking lot and the rest of the congregation following the event by live stream in the church. Father Jerry, now 70, is a Filipino missionary of 44 years of the Society of the Divine Word, SBD, currently based in Metro Manila, Philippines. Before the Holy Mass, which he presided over, and during the introductory part of the General Healing Spiritual Retreat, Auxiliary Bishop Michael Pham made some gracious remarks about the ministry apostolate of Father Jerry, getting more and more effective in person and in social media. Con celebrating the Mass were Father Nemi Sunkad, Father Mar Elias, Father Arnold Aurelio, Father Jude Serfino, and Father Mar's companion from Tarlac, Philippines, Father Noel Paquinto. Father Jerry brought a sacred relic of St. Ezekiel Moreno, an Augustinian Recollet, who was missioning in the Philippines and who's now being widely venerated as the patron of cancer patients and survivors like Father Jerry himself. Father Jerry's reflections are always spiced with practical and humorous biblical wisdom and teaching. St. Mary Parish is deeply grateful to Yola Argelia of the Parish Liturgical Committee and a family of Fatima Soriano for arranging the visit of Father Jerry. Tomorrow, Father Jerry will have his Eucharistic ap Apostolic in Resurrection Parish, Escondido, at two in the afternoon. Our ACA 2024 still stands at 159 participants with pledges of 41,558, of which 31,211 are already paid. Let's keep the momentum going stronger so that we can expect another year of success. With the theme, United in Christ, let us get hold of that 2024 ACA brochure in the pew or at the entrance table for proper guidance. From June to August, the Fire Prevention and Protection Department of the City of National City is conducting free of charge training courses of community preparedness in case of calamities. Please check the posters in the church at the office at Cadden Hall and the Ortman Center for more information. Our website also carries those announcements. Our faith formation ministry is preparing for the next catechetical year, which will start, which will start next month and culminate at Easter time in 2025. The church always encourages parents and guardians to fulfill their duties in the Christian and Catholic upbringing of their family. Proper details are in the weekend bulletin. We are dealing with a major roof repair of our church roof co costing $34,000 that started August 7th. The cost is covered by a reserve building fund. Everyone's patience and understanding will be highly appreciated. Next time, a more detailed report will be made regarding the installation of a new cooling and heat heating system units at Ortman Center. 
as well as the ongoing repairs of the tile floor at Cadden Hall damaged by accidental water intrusion in the soil underneath. St. Mary Parish rejoices the, with the families of Jonathan Hernandez and Michael Giamanilla, both youthful altar servers who will be conferred with the title of Eagle Scouts this evening at the Ortman Center. Their respective reception of this highest recognition of scouting follows their long service in the older ministry of St. Mary's and their very laudable sponsorship of projects that greatly benefited our parish, namely the installation of TV monitor screens for liturgical use at the Ortman Center. Tonight's event will be graced by the attendance of high national city officials and U.S. Boy Scout dignitaries and the scouting community. Congratulations to Jonathan and Michael and their families. All, in, all other important announcements are in the weekend bulletin and found as well on our website, www.stmarynationalcity.org. Thank you. Please stand and let us greet one another as we start the Holy Mass. <clears throat> this Mass carries the intention request of the Testa family. Our presider is Father Mar Elias. the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess all my God, and to you, my brothers. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord,
Let us pray. O God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises which surpass every human desire. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights of, out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, come, eat of my food and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of God. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. With A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. To Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. Good evening. Let me ask you, who among you come to Sunday or weekend Masses regularly? Who comes to Mass regularly? Don't be shy. If I ask, why do you come to Mass? You don't have to answer. These are my guess, guesses. First, it has been a family tradition. My parents taught us to come to Mass, to attend Mass every Sunday. 
Second, you will say, it's an obligation. If I don't say it, do it, I commit sin. Third, something is missing when I don't come to Mass. Fourth, I am sick. I need God's blessing. Fifth, I need some blessings. I ask God a lot of favors. So many different answers to the question, why do we come to Mass? But the best answer is because Jesus is here. Do you agree? Although the sad fact is many Catholics were asked, do you believe that really and truly Jesus is present here in his body and blood? Some answered yes, some are not sure, some said it's just a symbol. For four Sundays now, the gospel has been talking about food. And we learned that God rained down food in the Old Testament for the people in the journey in the desert. God provides for our food and our needs. Second, we learned also Jesus said, don't just work for food for the stomach. There is another kind of food for the heart, for the soul. The food about being a good character. The food of love, the food of patience, the food of forgiveness, and all these good things. Now, Jesus is saying, I am the real food. I came down from heaven. We are very blessed. Why? Because the listeners of Jesus in the gospel knew him only to be a neighbor, the son of Mary and Joseph, a carpenter, an ordinary person. But we people who live in the second millennium, 2,000 years after these words have been declared by Jesus, already know for sure many Eucharistic miracles where in the mass, the bread turned into flesh and the wine became blood. In Lanciano, Italy, in Portugal, in many parts of the world, the mass Eucharistic celebration miraculously turned into miracles. And so we believe Jesus is really here. Also, Many saints have given their lives in defense of the truth that Jesus is here. And we put the tabernacle in the church because we want people to come, especially when they need the help of God. Jesus is here. You know, we all have relationships. And many times... We want our loved ones to be closer, physically closer. Well, it's good thanks to technology that we see them through technology. It's easy to communicate to them from here to the other parts of the world. It's best that they are close to us in the same house, in the same place. We can hug them, we can kiss them, we can talk to them personally. Nothing replaces the closeness of physical occurrence. God is close to us. He is in heaven. He wants to be closer. He became man. He still wants to be closer to us. He became to us not only a companion by the side, outside, at the back. He wants to be inside of us. That is the teaching of the gospel today. I love you. I want to be with you. Not by your side, but inside of you. In the recent National Eucharistic Congress in Philadelphia, I believe, the Filipino Cardinal, Cardinal Chito Tagle, gave the homily for the last Mass, being the representative of the Pope. 
he said Jesus gives himself as a gift to you to us we need him and who would reject a gift that is very useful and nothing to pay everything is free that is Jesus giving himself as a gift I am Jesus, I am your Lord, I am your Savior, I am your God, I am your Creator. I give myself to you in the Eucharist, in the Word, in the bread and wine, in the Spirit, in the priest who blesses, in the community that worships. Jesus wants to be with us. That's why he gives himself to us. The second reading tells us today from St. Paul, the world is evil. We need God in order to win over evil. And the first reading says, wisdom prepared food for free, not for the stomach, but food, spiritual food. They all jive together in the person of Jesus. That is why today we ask ourselves, is Jesus real for me here? The same Jesus who was born in Bethlehem, crucified on Calvary, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father, is he here for real? Only two answers. If he is for real in here, we should give our best. When we come to Mass, we should recognize that Jesus is here. We should be silent in prayer. We should not talk unnecessarily inside the church. Whenever we receive him, we should be in the state of grace. We should be sorry for our sins. We should receive Jesus worthily. We believe it is him. If we believe it is really Jesus, then what we eat should transform us. Jesus, the loving God, makes us loving persons. Jesus that we receive in the Eucharist, the forgiving God, makes us forgiving persons. Jesus, the Eucharist that we receive, is a merciful, compassionate Lord, we should become compassionate persons too. If Jesus is real for us, it should change. He should change our lives. If he is not real for us, then he is a liar. Why should he say, I am the true bread from heaven? If he is not really the one. Why would the saints face death in order to defend the truth that Jesus is truly in the Mass. Why do we have adoration? Why do we have procession of the Eucharist? Why do we have daily Masses? Why do we go to church? It's because we believe Jesus is here. The converts from non-Catholic religions are telling us, you Catholics do not know the treasure that you have. Jesus, the real Jesus is with you in the Eucharist. And that is the reason why they came to the church before they're not Catholics. Now they love the Eucharist very dearly. This morning, Father Orbos was talking about gem, G-E-M. We know that gem is a treasure. But he said gem is G, God, E, encountered, M is moment. Gem, God, encountered moments. This is a gem. This is a treasure from heaven. We encounter God in the Eucharist in the person of Jesus. That is why thanks to the Eucharistic ministers who bring communion to the sick, as a priest for 31 years, it's one of my 
greatest joy to assist a dying person, hearing confession, forgiving his sins, and him or her receiving the Holy Eucharist. And I say, despite all your sins, receive Jesus. When you see him in heaven, he forgets all your sins and he welcomes you there. Very important, my dear Catholics. When somebody is sick, call the priest, either for prayer for healing or for prayer to entrust to God. Important, very important. The moment that a person dies and faces God, the Eucharist is the strongest defense against the judgment of God. Why? It is Jesus himself who judges, but Jesus himself who pardons because the sick, the dying, receives the Eucharist. Catholics, we have the greatest treasure on earth, Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament, Jesus in the Holy Mass, Jesus who comes to us. That is why there is an old song that says, I receive the living God. That is why it's encouraged after we receive communion, you don't talk to anybody, talk to Jesus. A young saint called Blessed Imelda said, is there anyone who received Jesus and, he did, and who did not die? I said, a lot of people are receiving Jesus, but they don't die. What she meant was, when you receive Jesus, you will die because he is God. But he does not allow us to die physically because he loves us and it's not yet the time to die. He just remains with us. He is God coming to us. This is the Eucharist, God coming down to us, Jesus as a gift for us who receive. Therefore, we remember whether it is Sunday or weekday or holy day of obligation. Now and all the, day, all the days of our lives, we try to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. We try to worship Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. We try to keep ourselves worthy to receive him because no less than God himself comes to us in the Eucharist, in the body of Christ, in the presence of the church. This is our gem and nothing can replace it as the greatest treasure on earth, Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. Amen. We stand to profess our faith. I believe in one God. Amen. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ. One God. And by the Holy Spirit, for our sake, he suffered and rose again, in accordance with the scriptures.
united as Christ's body, we offer our prayers to the Father. That members of the church spread throughout the world may be filled with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are ignorant of Christ may receive the gospel message of salvation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our That the Lord may provide all who lack access to quality education the opportunity to grow in knowledge, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may help all gathered here to grow in our devotion to the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for all that the Lord has given to us, may we show our gratitude by sharing with others through our generous gift to the 2024 Annual Catholic Appeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that those who have died may rejoice as they join the communion of saints in the fullness of God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord for the eternal repose of the soul of Wilfredo Celestio, for whom this mass is mainly offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord for all the intentions in our church prayer offering book, for the health and recovery of all the sick in our parish community, and for our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. Father, give you give us life to the life and death of your Son. We ask that you hear our prayers that we offer today through Christ our Lord. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange 
that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our bishop, all the bishops and the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
As one family of God, we pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass our sins, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. peace with you. Behold the Lord Jesus, the bread of life, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Made partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conformed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The two uh, Eagle Scouts, Jonathan and Michael, come forward. These are our two uh, newly added Eagle Scouts in the parish to be honored tonight. And we say congratulations to them and be good models for our young people. Congratulations to you, Michael and Jonathan. And we encourage our young people to do more for our parish not only for the title and the awards, but for God's own glory. Thank you, Jonathan and Michael. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.